Hey everyone, welcome back to Math 111. This is Scott. Let's get started. What we're going to be talk talking about now is section 6.3, which has to do with logarithmic functions. This is the last major category of functions we're going to be covering in this class. So we are going to be first learning what these are and some of their basic properties today. And then over the next couple of weeks, we're going to figure out all of the relationships between these and the things that we've seen already. All right, let's just bite the bullet. What is a logarithm? Logarithm base b. What this represents is, and there's a couple ways we can phrase this, but what it represents is the, uh, the inverse function to an exponential of base b. So log, and then we write it like this, put a little b in the subscript, is the inverse function to to the exponential function b to the x. So in other words, so let's think about what this means. This means that a logarithm on the one hand undoes an exponential. So thus A logarithm, one way of thinking about it is, it undoes an exponential function. So what that means is, uh, if I did the log base b of b to the x, they would cancel each other out and just leave me with an x. And then conversely, if I had b to the power of the log base b of x, those would cancel out and also leave me with an x. When Remember what it means to be a uh, uh, an inverse function is to cancel out the other function and just make an x no matter which way you compose them. Two, it reverses. the rule of input and output. So in particular, if I had b to the b to the x equals y with an x playing the role of in and a y playing the role of out then the corresponding, this corresponds with the statement, corresponds to uh, log base b of y equals x. So it switches the roles of input and output. So it reverses the role of, out, of input and output. And then third way of looking at it would be to say that it answers the question what power of b makes this. So in other words, log base, let's say, 3 of 27 answers the question, 3 to what power equals 27? 
Well, that's pretty famous. It's pretty famous that 3 to the third equals 27. And so that means this equals 3. Okay. So those are the three main ways of understanding what the meaning of the word logarithm is. Now the actual word itself, it comes from log, which is short for logos, which means ratio, plus a rhythm, which is the root of the word arithmetic, which means number. So log plus a rhythm makes a logarithm, which is the ratio number. which tells you as you raise things to higher and higher powers what power it's going to take before you make the thing that you want. Now there are two special logarithms that have special notation. Special notation for important bases. So the two special logarithms are what are called the common logarithm, also known as the Briggsian logarithm, this is the log base 10. So we just write L-O-G and we don't write the B. So log of a number here represents the log base 10 of that number. So if you don't see a power here, so you don't, we don't write the base if the base is 10. And this is also uh, what a calculator means when it has the when it has a button that says LOG. So this So this is the logarithm. calculator means when it says LOG. So for example, if you look on a calculator such as this, there is a log that is not a log where you then get to give it the base, it is the log base 10. And you'll notice, by the way, that the it shares the button with 10 to the x. And that's because those are the inverses of each other. Okay, that's the common logarithm. And then there is the natural logarithm. And this is the log base E, where E is Euler's number, as covered in section 6.1. So we write LN for logarithmus naturalis. It's 
So this is equal to the log base e. So here, this is how we write. When the base is e, which you remember is a number, kind of like pi, it has decimal, is a decimal, and the decimal uh, places go on and on forever. And uh, they start off like that. It's named after Euler's number, or named after Leonard Euler, it's called Euler's number. Uh, one of the greatest mathematicians in history, and uh, in honor of him, one of the um, one of the constants that he discovered some of the interesting properties of is named in his uh, in his honor. And this is represented on a calculator by Ellen. most calculators as Ellen. And one of the first tasks that we're going to have to do is translate certain equations back and forth, either between the or from the language of logarithms to the language of exponentials, or the other way around. So here's an example of a translation from logarithms to exponentials. So rewrite as exponential equations and what we'll have are going to be some logarithmic equations to start with. So first off, let's say we had something like the log base 5 of C equals D. So what we've got here is a base of 5, an input of C, and an output of D in the logarithm land. Now the way this is going to look when we translate it into an exponential equation is that the input and output spots are going to be reversed. And the 5 will go from being the base of the logarithm to the base of the exponent. So input becomes output, output becomes input. And so now the new input is d, so it's 5 to the d, equals c. And then if we were to try something like this, let's say we had log base x of 21 equals y. Now, once again, we have an input and an output in logarithm form that are going to get switched when we go to uh, when we go to exponential form. So, the base is the base, but now the former output becomes the input and the former input becomes the output. So now it's x to the y equals 21. We just reverse the roles of what were in here and what was out there. Now let's take something like log log of x equals 2. Now here, what we've got is a case where there's no written base, which means the base is 10. So just seeing log log means it's a base of 10. So it's a base of 10, and what was the input of x and the output of 2 now gets switched around and it becomes 10 to the second power equals x. And then uh, let's try one with the natural log. So let's say we had the we had ln of three 
equals C. So this means a base of E and this was the in, this was the out, and those switch around, so it's going to be e to the c equals 3. So that's one side of the coin, switching from a logarithm expression to an exponential expression. We start with something that looks like a logarithm, we end with something that looks like an exponential. Now we can turn the tables and rewrite something that looks like an exponential expression as a logarithmic equation. Rewrite as logarithmic equations. So now we're going to start with something that is exponential in form and end up rewriting it as its logarithmic counterpart. So if I said 3 to the a equals m, and I wanted to turn the tables, I would figure out what was in, what was out, and what was the base, and I would put them into play down here as follows. So the base is the base base 3. Now what was once the output becomes the input, so it's 3 to the m. Oops, sorry. Silly, silly, silly. Base is 3, so we're talking about logarithms now. Log base 3. What was the output becomes the input. So log base 3 of m is equal to a. New in, new out. Input, output, switch around. So now, let's see, what if we had something like L to the negative 2 equals P. Well, once again, you just have to, just have to clear up what's the base, what's the in, what's the out. Base in and out, so then that means we're going to be talking about a log base L of p, so the former output has become the input, equals negative 2. C, let's say what we had was something that involved a log, uh, or let's say it has a base of 10, so 10 to the 10 to the to the d is equal to 15.7. So then this has a base of 10, an input of d, an output of 15.7. So the base becomes the base, and we would write log base 10, which you just write as a log, and then in and out are switched. So now the input is going to be the 15.7 and the output is going to be D. And then we can have lastly the, the equation E to the E to the K equals b. So the base is e here, the in is k, the out is b, and we turn the tables around and that means it's going to be a natural, a natural log, so log base e. The input is going to be b, the output is going to be the k.
Now we can use the uh, we can use this little switcheroo technique to solve equations that are given to us when the variable is inside a logarithm. So we can solve. logarithmic equations by turning them into exponential equations. And evaluating. Now, one thing that's going to be useful here is to have a quick little recap of some of the properties of exponents that are going to come in handy. So let's recall some of these. So useful properties of exponents. So this is not going to be a very long list of properties of exponents. We'll add some more to, uh, to later lists when they become useful. But for now, it's the things that are going to come in handy right now. So first off, remember what it means if you have a negative exponent. So if you have a to the negative power of m, so this is the same thing as 1 over a to the m. So for example, 3 to the negative 2 is equal to 1 over 3 squared, which is equal to 1 ninth. Other properties of exponents would be if we have a fractional power, like a to the 1 over m. This is the same as the, m, the m's root of a. So for example, let's say I had 25 to the 1 half. That's the same as the square root of 25, which we wouldn't usually write that to, but you know, no harm in it, which would be equal to 5. Let's see, and then another useful thing would be an extension of that. What if it is a, an actual fraction, a to the n divided by m, then we can rewrite this as the m the mth root of a to the n. Or, whichever is easier for us, we can also rewrite it as a as the mth root of a all to the n. Those are the same thing, so we can rewrite it whichever one is easiest for us. So for example, Let's say I had 27 to the 2 thirds. That's the same as, as the cube root of 27 squared, which is the same as 3 squared, which is the same as 9. All right, those are the properties that are going to be most useful right off the bat here, and then other important things to remember, other important facts. Other facts. So other facts that might come in handy would be things like 10 to the negative 1 is equal to 0.1. One hundred is the same as ten squared. Uh, ten to the negative two is the same as zero point zero one. Remember, negative powers of ten are the same as just moving the decimal spot that many spots over. Positive powers of ten are things uh, like one followed by that many zeros. Uh, let's see, point five, which is the same as one half is the same as 2 to the negative 1, 0 0.25, which equals 1 fourth, is the same as 2 to the negative 2, because it's 1 over 2 squared. 
Zero point one two five is the same as one eighth, which is the same as two to the negative three. So these are some facts that'll come in handy from time to time. Uh, and then with those, we are probably in good enough shape to just go ahead and pull the band-aid off and try some solving of equations for, by changing them to a different form. So we can solve by rewriting equations like this. First, let's start with something like the log base 2 of x equals 3. So what we've got here is an equation where the unknown is within a logarithm. And so we can, uh, we can change it to a more familiar form and get the, ex get the variable out of the logarithm by changing it to an exponential equation. So the base is the base, the input is x, the output is 3, so then when we switch we're going to have the base still being 2, but now the input is going to be 3 and the output is going to be x. So that means x equals 2 to the third, which is the same as 2 times 2 times 2, which equals 8. Let's try log base 3 of x equals negative 2. So now, once again, we have a base there, we have an input of x, and we have an output over here, and so base stays the base, the output becomes the input, oops, negative 2, this is the n, is equal to x. So if x equals 3 to the negative 2, then that's the same as 1 over 3 squared, which is in other words 1 over 9. Okay. Now let's try something like this. C log base 25 of x is equal to 1 half. So then what this means is, here's the b, here's the former in, here's the former out. What this means is now we're talking about a base of 25 now being raised to a power of 1 half equals x. Input becomes output, output becomes input. And a 25 to the 1 half is the same as this, just the square root of 25, which just equals 5. And then we could have something like this. Let's say that we had the log base 16 of, of x equals negative 1 half. Well, Still 16 is the base, negative 1 half is the power, and x is now going to be the output. So x equals negative 1 half, the negative 1 half power of 16, which is the same as 1 over 
16 to the 1 half. Negative powers mean 1 over. Which is the same then as saying 1 over, since it's a, since it's a 1 half power, it's the square root of 16, which is then just going to be 1 over 4. Now, another, another example could have just log, so the common log of x is equal to 4. Now, with no visible base, that means that we have an understood base of 10. So we're going to have 10 to the 4th equals x. 10 to the 4th means a 1 followed by four zeros. And then, let's say we have ln of x is equal to two, which means base, so now the base is going to be e, so that means we're talking about e to a power of two equals x, which means x is going to equal, and now this is not something that we know off the top of our heads. All the rest of these were kind of nicely engineered. We don't, we didn't have to reach for a calculator to do any of them, but uh, but every once in a while we will. So you use a calculator, or you can use Desmos, and you can say so second e to the power of two, and that gives us. 7.389 and just by default I'm just going to go to three decimal places in problems like this unless somebody tells me otherwise. Alright, so that's how we can solve some simple equations just by rewriting them in exponential form. Now, when it comes to actually trying to evaluate logarithmic expressions or simplify them, what we are frequently going to need to do is employ a couple of tricks of the trade. So, tricks for evaluating or simplifying. logarithmic expressions. Alright, so here is one of the most basic tricks. So one of the most basic tricks is if we have a log base b of something, then we can try to rewrite the thing that's inside the logarithm, the argument of the logarithm, uh, as some power of b. So if we have something like this, rewrite the uh, thing that's on the inside here so, as a power, and it's important that it be a power, of b. Then the log and the exponential will cancel each other. So there's that, and then alternatively, if we have b to the power of the log base b of something, so if that's the situation, these just cancel each other straight away. These cancel to leave. Just the uh, just whatever was up in the exponent. All right. Well, let's uh, let's just try our best here. See what we can do. So an example of something like this 
is evaluate the following. So maybe we have the log base 10, so we wouldn't write it as a log. And we have, say, 1,000 to the second power. So our goal here is that we want 1,000 to the second power to be rewritten as a power of 10. So this is the same thing as 10 to the third squared, which is the same as 10 to the sixth because the uh, exponents would multiply together. So then what that means is we'd be talking about the log base 10 of 10 to the sixth. And those would cancel each other, and that would just give us 6. See, we could also have something like this. Could have the log, we could have something like 3 times the log log of 0 0.001. And now, what we'd have to do is we'd have to figure out what is 0 0.001 expressed as a power of 10. Again, no base, no base written means a base of 10. So then we have. Just this part is the same as 10 to the negative 1, 2, 3. Basically, it's how many uh, decimal places there are uh, until, the, until you get to the 1. So, ch -ch -ch. All right, so then this, so this is like a side, a little bit of a side work. So then this is 3 times the log of 10 to the negative 3, but then those cancel each other, and that's going to be just 3 times negative 3, which is just going to be negative 9. Now we could just as easily have something of the other direction, where the logarithm is on the inside, and the exponential function is on the outside. So an example of something like this would be if we had something like e to the natural log of 1.921. So first you see this and you start to panic, but then you realize the natural log and e have the same base. And so the log base e and the exponential base e are inverses, they cancel, and so we'll have 1.921. And then uh, another another case of this with the common log would be if we had something like 10 to the power of the LOG log of 1, 2, 3, 4. So again, because these have the same base, and one is a logarithm and one is an exponential, they will cancel each other out and we will get 1, 2, 3, 4. And maybe we could have something like this, where we have a natural log of 1 over e. Now, when you look at this, you have to try to figure out how is this, how can this be written so that it is e to some power? Well, 1 over e, that is the same as e to the negative 1. So what that means is that the, is the expression that we're talking about here is the natural log of e to the negative 1, which then will cancel, and that will just give a negative 1. And if we have something like 10, it's a d, uh, f, if we have something like 10 to the power of 3.1416, plus 4. We would evaluate that just as we would evaluate any complicated expression, just in pieces. Oops. 
uh, tend to log that. Otherwise, this problem would be much, much harder. So, uh, so same base, they cancel, and we have 3.1416 plus 4 is equal to 7.1416. So those are the uh, the main the main easier tricks, and then we can up the ante a little bit. So some other useful tricks. Other useful tricks. So for one thing. Uh, for one thing, if we have a square root of something, that's the same as that thing to the one-half power. One over the square root of something is the same as that thing to the negative one-half power. And if we ever have something like just one, that's the same as something to the zero. So the consequence of this, so thus, log base b of one equals zero for all b. No, uh, no logarithm of one is anything other than zero for all b. All right. So let's uh, see. You uses of some of these tricks such as so we evaluate so now we're going to open it up and do logs other than the common and natural log and let's go with the log base 2 of 1 over 16 so now the question is, what is 1 over 16 expressed as a power of 2? Well, we all know that 16 is 4 times 4, but that's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So this is the same, is the same as 1 over 2 to the 4th, which is the same as 2 to the negative 4. So then what we're really talking about here is equal to the log base 2 of 2 to the negative 4, which is just going to equal negative 4. Similarly, if we have something like the log base 13 of the square root of 13, then we need to express 13, or the square root of 13 as a, an exponent, base 13, and square root of 13 is the same as 13 to the 1 half power. So then that means that this is equal to the log base 13 of 13 to the 1 half power. And the log and exponent of the same base are inverse functions, they cancel each other, that just leaves us with an answer of one half. Now here's where things get trickiest. So we can have some very tricky examples in something like this. So C, if we took a log base 125 of 25, then we would be in a little bit of trouble at first because we need to figure out how to write 25 as an exponent of 125. Now 25 is equal to, well, that's the question. 125 to the what? But, uh, so that's so that's the real question that we need to uh, ask ourselves. And the way we do this is we basically just throw things together until we have something. So we do know that 25 is equal to 5 squared. That's a famous fact. But 
125 is equal to the cube root of 125, which means that 5 is equal to 125 to the one third. And so what that means is that 25 is equal to 125 to the one third squared, which means that 25 is equal to 125, and then you would multiply together the exponents here, and that would make two thirds. So that was all kind of like scratch work or side work. And so then what we would have is the log base 125 of 25 is equal to log base 125 of 125 to the 2 thirds. And when I write it that way, all of a sudden it becomes easy because it's a, a pair of inverse functions. So they cancel each other out and they leave us with the... Uh, they leave us with the, the exponent. Now, what if I asked you something like ln1? Well, ln of 1 is the same as asking the question, e to what power makes 1? And ln1, like any other logarithm, of 1 equals just 0. So e to the 0 equals 1, which means we're talking about ln e to the 0, in other words, just 0. And for that matter, if this had been log log of 1, well, 10 to the 0 equals 1, which means we're talking about the log log of 10 to the 0, which cancels and just leaves 0. Now, we can evaluate a lot of uh, fancy logarithmic expressions using nothing but the properties of exponents, but sometimes we do just have to use a calculator. So, we can evaluate ln and log log on a calculator. Or Desmos. And they can be found just uh, either as buttons, like on the TI-30, or if you are using a TI-89, so for a TI-89, there you have the LN on the face of it. It's right here on top of the X as a... Uh, as you might be able to see here, it's a little, a little blurry. Focus. So right on top of the X, you see the LN. However, uh, so so LN has a button, but to do the LOG, you have to use the uh, use a catalog. LOG is in the catalog. So if you uh, so if you want to use uh, TI eighty nine to get the LOG, what you need to do is let me clear away some stuff here. What you, what you need to do is press the catalog button. Here, focus, 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 focus. So you press the catalog button, and then if you press the button that has the L on it, so that would be number four, 
that skips you to the L's and you can scroll down, scroll down, scroll down until you find uh, until you find the log. And then if you put the number in, always put a decimal point in there if you're in automatic mode and that will give you a number. Alternatively, if you do uh, on some of them, if you do a diamond plus seven, on some calculators. So some calculators have a hotkey. Oops, calculators. So some calculators have a hotkey where if you do diamond then seven, it brings up LOG log. Not all the TI-89s are programmed with that in, but yours might be if you have that. If you don't have a TI-89 calculator, uh, then most likely you have both LN and log on the face. So most, most other calculators have buttons for both. And Desmos also can do both. Desmos can also do both. And if you're not using a keyboard, uh, then you can go to functions miscellaneous. For example, and you need, uh, need to type it. You can go to functions or other functions. Uh, miscellaneous. Okay, but anyway, so for example. So for example, let's say we needed to do this on a calculator. Evaluate the LOG log of the square root of 5 to 3 decimal places. Okay, so for example, if it's a calculator like this that you're sporting, then it's pretty easy. You would just type in log, and then you would just do square root of five, parentheses, parentheses, and you get your answer. If it's a calculator like this that you are using, then if you've got the hotkey, then you can just do diamond 7 and then do the square root of 5 enter you have to put all the parentheses on this one some calculators are a little bit more forgiving others are less but if you and then do diamond enter to get a decimal answer and if you're doing desmos then you would just type it in log log so log of square root of 5 is approximately equal to 0 0.349. And now we can talk about some places where logarithms are used in applications. There are a number of strange places where one will find a logarithm in an application, a logarithmic function as an application. Uh, but the main ones we're going to look at are going to come primarily from physics and chemistry. So the first one is, uh, is pH. So this is in chemistry. 
It's a measure of whether a particular substance is more acidic or more alkaline. So, uh, so the formula here is that pH is equal to negative log, and it's log base 10, so common log, and then H plus, where H plus is the proportion I should say concentration concentration of hydrogen ions and that's in moles per liter so those of you who have studied chemistry will know what, what, what this means so a mole of something is is 6.022 times 10 to the 24 molecules of it and then a liter is obviously a liter and so this would be figuring out how many hydrogen ions there are in each each liter of the substance and measured in the number of moles so that's one of them Another one would be something like the Richter scale. This is for earthquakes. And the uh, so the Richter scale gives the uh, intensity of uh, of earthquakes. So if I one if this is the intensity of one earthquake, and I2 is the intensity of a second, earthquake and then m1 and m2 are their magnitudes on their on the Richter scale of the two earthquakes on the Richter scale, then what we have is that the log, that's again the log base 10, of I1 over I2, so in other words the ratio of the two intensities, is equal to M1 minus M2. So we'll see an application. We'll see this. Uh, what this looks like in a word word problem in a minute. But then uh, also another application is in the measurement of sound, and that's the decibel, the loudness in decibels, based on the intensity of the sound, based on the energy of it. So. Loudness in decibels. So if uh, so if I1 is equal to the intensity of a sound and here it's watts per square meter And I0 is equal to 10 to the negative 12. Oops, negative 12. Then the, uh, then the loudness 
of a sound is equal to or I should, I should say loudness of I1 is equal to 10 log I1 over I0 where this is the loudness in decibels. And then the last one is the exposure index for a camera. So what we're going to have is F is going to represent the f-stop time on the camera. So different cameras will have different values of this. T is going to represent the exposure time. And then, uh, and then EI is what's called the exposure index. Exposure index. And EI is going to equal the log base 2 of F squared divided by T. So now let's try some examples of each of these three. So example, let's say that we had a substance with a pH of, so example A, a substance has a pH of 7.4. Spoiler alert, this is the pH of human blood. What is its concentration of hydrogen atom or hydrogen ions? All right. Well, Let's just put the pieces into the formula here and hope for the best. So that's going to be our general approach to these, to these applications is we will put in pieces that we have and try to solve for what they want from us. So here we have pH equals 7.4. We want H plus, the concentration of the hydrogen ions. So that means 7.4 is equal to negative log of our mysterious concentration, the one that we're looking for. And so we want to just solve this. Now we move the, move the negative over so that it fits the pattern of what we have been dealing with so far. So negative 7.4 is equal to the log base 10, oops, log base 10 of H plus. So that means that H plus is equal to 10 to the negative 7.4. Now here, if you do this in a calculator, so for example, this one, so if we try entering 10, oops, 10 to the 7.4, negative 7.4, what we're going to get here is that, which is not very, uh, not very easy to read, not very useful. Now, if you have a calculator like this, there's going to be an option, such as you see up here, it says scientific, sci, or engineering. So that gives you the option to turn on scientific notation or engineering notation. 
We'll switch it over from the floating point that it currently is to scientific notation. And then that, you'll notice here what it gives you is the number in scientific notation, 3.981. And then you can see a little in the corner there, times 10 to the negative 8. So that is how we would express this scientific answer with scientific notation. So 3.981 times 10 to the negative 8 moles per liter. So that's, uh, so that's one example, an example with the pH. Now let's take an example from the Richter scale. So an example from the Richter scale might be something like, I guess this is example B. So let's say we had two earthquakes. Uh, one of them was magnitude 6, one of them was magnitude 7, something like that. Uh, earthquake. One has magnitude six. On the Richter scale, and earthquake two. has magnitude 7. On the Richter scale. And the question is, how much more intense was earthquake 2 compared with earthquake 1. So in other words, what it wants from us here is it wants the ratio of the intensities. So what we have are M1, which equals 6, and M2, which equals 7. And what we want is the ratio what we actually want is I2 divided by I1, which is the ratio of how many times more intense Earthquake, one, earthquake uh, 2 was compared with Earthquake 1. So this is the ratio. Of the intensity. Of Earthquake 2. versus Earthquake 1. Okay, well, this is going to take a little bit of work on account of the fact that the formula as given to us is arranged ever so slightly differently, but we can do some math and we can figure it all out. So, we know that the log of I1 over I2, which is unfortunately not quite what we want, but we uh, but it's close, is equal to 6 minus 7, M1 minus M2, if you look back at the formula. So that means it's equal to negative 1. And so, 
because this is again base 10, we can just rewrite this as I1 over I2 is equal to 10 to the negative 1. It's just rewriting it in its exponential form instead of its logarithm form. So that is the same as just 0.1. But what I want is actually the reciprocal of this. So I want this actually to be flipped. So flip both sides by raising to a negative 1. because I wanted I2 over I1, and I have currently the reciprocal of that. Now, 0.1 to the negative 1 is the same as actually just 10, because it's the reciprocal of the reciprocal of 10. And over here, we have I2 over I1 now, which means that I2 is 10 times more powerful than I1. So, Earthquake 2. is 10 times more powerful than Earthquake 1. So what that means is going up by 1 on the Richter scale increases your intensity by a factor of 10. All right. Now, Let's do a couple of examples with the exposure index. Let's say you have a camera and its f-stop time was 16. And then let's say that it's uh, that you wanted an exposure time of four, four seconds. What is the exposure index in that case? Well, the exposure index is equal to the log base two of f squared divided by t, which here is going to be the log base two of F squared is 16 squared, and it's 256. And then uh, the t here is 4. And so then if you actually do this division, then you would get the log base 2 of 32, 256 divided by 4. Sorry, 64. 64. But 64, 64, if we think about that, is 8 times 8, which is 2 times 2 times 2, 2 times 2 times 2. So that's the same as log base 2 of 2 to the 6th. And they cancel. And that gives us an EI, an exposure index, of 6. So that's one direction we can go. The other direction is the reverse. So the other direction that we might want to go is the following. So what will the F stop be if we have
an exposure time of 2 and an exposure index exposure index of let's say 5 well let's find out so what we are told here is EI equals 5 T equals 2 F is a mystery so 5 is equal to the log base 2 of, and then up here we're going to have a mystery f squared divided by 2. And now looking at this, uh, at first it looks a little complicated and weird, but then we realized, oh, this we can rewrite first off as an exponential expression. And so we can have, so we can uh, raise it, uh, rewrite it as 2 to the fifth is equal to the log base 2, or sorry, not log base 2 anymore, uh, just f squared divided by 2. Now 2 to the 5th, you can crunch the numbers, and you get 2 to the 5th equals 32. Which then, you multiply both sides by 2, and you have 64 equals f squared, which means that the f stop Which means if we take the square root of both sides, f equals 8, and so an f stop here would be 8. Alright, well that's quite enough of this for now. So join me next episode for uh, more Math 111. Till then, bye.